Oh. Hey! Didn't see you there. Man. I love Zelda. Speaking of which... Ugh, man, I'm tall. Anyway, my first deep dive into The Legend of Zelda was with this. The Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition on GameCube. Back in the day, with this sweet little disc, I got to experience both Zelda 1 and 2 for the very first time, alongside one of my favorite Nintendo 64 games, and its critically acclaimed sequel. It's weird there's no Link to the Past on here. In the dense fog that is my childhood memory, I've interacted with A Link to the Past, but had no clue what the fuck that was. When I was a slightly more conscious child, I played Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time at my cousin's house, and eventually landed a copy for myself. I think I owned Ocarina of Time after that, because I do recall being able to beat the game with ease by the time Master Quest hit the GameCube in tandem with The Wind Waker, a game I didn't play because it meant that that cool Space World demo wasn't real, and I didn't want to play some cel shaded beautiful timeless masterpiece, I wanted to play a real Zelda! Damn it! I wanted a real Zelda, so I got the collection for my GameCube, and I had Oracle of Ages for my Game Boy Color for a year or two already. I didn't come across Seasons till later, but I very fondly remember playing Ages and thinking it was a fantastic game. You know, as a kid, that Capcom logo really didn't mean anything to me other than Street Fighter 2 on the Genesis. But as years went on, I attempted to revisit Ages, but I wasn't able to beat it again like I did the first time. Same thing always happened to me when I started to play it again. So I'd slap it in my Game Boy, I boot it up, I do the intro, I do the first dungeon, and then I turn it off and never play it again. I think I know why I stopped this time, though. See, it sure looks and feels a lot like a Zelda game made by Nintendo, but there's just so many not-Nintendo things about it. And the inspiration from the Zeldas that Capcom did implement, I really wish that they did. Because Ocarina set the bar of Zelda needing dialogue and exposition to make it grandiose, the Oracle of Ages felt the need to do the same. There's so much non-optional talking in these games. Tree doesn't shut the hell up and constantly wants to bone Link. Characters interrupt you directly to tell you what you need next and where to get it, and it's tedious. Link's Awakening didn't have this bullshit. For whatever reason though, Seasons feels like a much more consistent experience. Maybe it's because changing between worlds doesn't take like 30 seconds and the dungeons aren't drawn out maze puzzles and allow you to focus on pretty well thought out engaging combat. This game gives me Zelda 1 vibes. Man, Oracle of Seasons is a blast. So strange to think that one version of a game is that much better than another. That's like taking Pokemon Red and Blue and making Red about the battling and catching, and Blue the Pokedex. It's like Capcom took two major concepts from The Legend of Zelda and isolated them into their own two versions combat, and puzzle solving. I've talked about my gripes with Ocarina of Time, but I can't help but think about it when playing the Game Boy Color Zeldas. All of the dialogue and the cutscenes, I get it in Ocarina of Time. Make it cinematic, show off the new graphics, create an epic. And by all means, they accomplished that. But it seems like Capcom saw Ocarina of Time and Majora's Masks having a fantastic narrative alongside the gameplay, and made an attempt at giving Oracle of Ages the same thing, when really they should have made it something like Link's Awakening. These games aren't bad by any means, they're just bizarre. Nintendo trusted Capcom to make Capcomprehensive Zelda games for their new Game Boy Color system, and I think that they met the general public's expectations. But not mine. Maybe the third Capcom Zelda will be better. Yeah, Capcom got a third game in the series, the Minish Cap. Now I have to say, this is the best looking Zelda. It is so polished, from the animations to the effects, holy moly does this ooze with quality. But let's talk about something, Ezlo. I hate this motherfucker. Reminding me where to go or chiming in on the story is fine, but blatantly telling me how to beat an enemy or how I should approach a puzzle with an item goes too far. God damn, 30% of the time I just want him to shut the hell up. He's funny, I guess, and he is pretty integral to the plot, but he did not have to be this way. I'm a gamer, have some faith that I can figure some things out, like I know what the L button does. Why doesn't the L button do anything? If you're wondering why I'm using a GameCube controller to play a Game Boy Advance game, that's because I'm playing this on the Game Boy Advance Player on the Nintendo GameCube. Damn! That's what the final boss looks like? I should play this game. Sword, Pegasus boots, bombs, shield, all these things get rotated out between the A and the B button, and R is used as the action command, like for talking, rolling, and picking stuff up. That makes sense. It would suck trying to talk to someone to accidentally drop a bomb because it's on the A button, which you can still use for talking to people anyway. Oh wait, you do use the L button for fusing kinstones. Really? Kinstones? Now, kinstones we'll get into at another time, but that easily could have been its own dialogue option or something that triggers when I have an item equipped while talking to a townsperson. Not something that hogs a major button on the Game Boy Advance. Sure, you use kinstones outside townsfolk, but still in the same fashion, and it just makes the experience tedious. 
Why do I have to do this? What I don't understand is why not assign the L button for a permanent required item like the Pegasus boots or the shield, or hell, the map, instead of making it a way to go left in the menus. What I really want to do is hit select to use the map, but that just makes Ezlo go off about being tired or some shit. Talking to Ezlo should have been a menu option or something, not its own button. Hell, if he was in the menu and then the kinstone was select, that would help this be a less cumbersome mess. And this tedium sucked ass. I just want to run with the Pegasus boots and not flip between them and some other item I know I need. Speaking of the Pegasus boots, why do I have to learn how to hold my sword and dash with it? None of the other 2D Zeldas do that! Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ages, Seasons, none of them are like this. You just do it. Why is it to be such a process? I know why, because Wind Waker had sword techniques, and Capcom just had to scrape the dead skin cells off of whatever Zelda came out at the time, and they don't know what makes a Zelda game a Zelda game. These games are like a really good interpretation of a Zelda, except that they lack all the magic, wonder, and consistency. It's just like copying homework in high school. You would change things around to make it look like you came up with something original, but really, it's just a cheap imitation of someone else who knew how to do it better than you. And this is weird, because Capcom was the one to port a Link to the Past and developed Four Swords a couple years back. So you think they know what worked and what didn't in a Zelda game. Now, I needed to get this off my chest because I'm going to be talking about all the 2D Zeldas in a more articulate manner. A forum designed to highlight strengths, weaknesses, and to define what makes a Zelda game a Zelda game. Now, until such a thing happens, I'm going to be playing a good Zelda game. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a like. It really does go a long way. Let me know what you think about the Capcom Zeldas in the comments below. I think that they're a little whack. Check out my other YouTube channel called The Dad Show where I release episodic segments of my stream. And subscribe because I got a lot more coming. Deuces!